If you are trying to burn fat, doing cardio is probably something that is on your mind. While doing cardio can be helpful for fat loss, it is important to structure your cardio in an intelligent way, so that you do not tire yourself out and can at least maintain muscle while losing fat. So in today's video, I will discuss how you can use cardio to lose fat more effectively. We will discuss common questions like what type of cardio is best for fat loss, how long should each cardio session last, how often should you do cardio, and much more. But first, it is important to mention that doing more cardio is typically not enough for fat loss. We can't make up for an uncontrolled diet via cardio. While you can burn roughly 500 calories if you have an intense 1 hour run, you can eat back these calories in a matter of 10 minutes. There is also research supporting that just doing more cardio without changing your nutritional habits doesn't do much for fat loss. Cardio by itself typically does not burn enough calories to put you in a significant calorie deficit. A calorie deficit means that you consume fewer calories than your body expands in a day. Let's say you do 30 minutes of cardio 3 times per week and you burn roughly 250 calories per session. Over an entire week you have 750 calories of additional energy expenditure. A simplistic theory of fat metabolism states that 1 pound of fat contains roughly 3500 calories of energy. So theoretically you would only lose 0.2 pounds of fat per week if you would just do more cardio without changing your nutritional habits. So to see significant fat loss, it is key you combine cardio with a calorie controlled diet. I have other videos that go into how you can create a calorie deficit via nutrition and I will make sure that I link those in the description below. Now if you are in a calorie deficit via nutrition and want to boost fat loss, then doing additional cardio is helpful because it slightly increases your calorie deficit. But what type of cardio is best for losing fat? A 2017 research review compared the fat loss effects of moderate intensity cardio with high intensity cardio. When the number of calories burned during cardio were matched, no significant differences between the two forms of cardio was found. This is nice because it provides flexibility. If you are short on time, you can do high intensity forms of cardio, whereas if you have more time and maybe you dislike high intensity cardio, you can do more moderate intensity sessions or even go for long walks as a way for you to burn additional calories. But assuming you want to at least maintain muscle while losing fat, it is also important to look into how you can balance cardio and strength training. Because just doing a lot of cardio and maintaining a calorie deficit can result in good weight loss, but you do not maintain muscle mass because your muscles aren't challenged in training. As I have discussed in one of my previous videos, we need to manage four specific cardio variables. That is cardio modality, duration, frequency and timing. I will go over these variables one by one and give a research update because several new studies came out since the last time we discussed how you can combine cardio and strength training. First, we have cardio modality. Should you run, cycle, do the elliptical or another form of cardio? There's a good amount of research comparing the effects of running and cycling on your body's ability to gain muscle. Typically, choosing cycling over running helps people gain more muscle and strength. This likely is because cycling is lower impact and not as fatiguing as running. When you run, there is greater muscle damage and you require more time to fully recover from the running session. Cycling on the other hand is low impact and requires less recovery time. So to combine cardio with strength training while trying to lose fat, it makes sense to opt for a cardio modality that is low impact, like cycling, the elliptical or even something like swimming. By doing this, you more quickly recover from your cardio session and it is easier to combine with lifting workouts. Next, let's discuss cardio duration. Longer cardio sessions tend to be more fatiguing, so the longer your cardio sessions are, the more the cardio tends to interfere with muscle and strength development. Doing no more than 20 to 30 minutes of moderate or high intensity cardio helps you prevent cardio from interfering with strength development. But this is different with low intensity forms of cardio like walking. Because the intensity is so low, you can walk for quite a while without feeling all too fatigued and be able to still work out just fine if you have a strength workout coming up later that day or even the day after. So if you want to go on 30 or 40 plus minute walks as your cardio, that is fine and won't affect your strength training. Now that we know a good typical cardio duration, let's also look into cardio frequency. Most of the studies that show cardio negatively impacts muscle development typically are studies that have the participants do 4 or more cardio sessions per week. If we look at research where participants perform 3 or fewer than 3 cardio sessions per week, we see that this cardio does not negatively impact muscle development. A good example is a 2009 study. When the participants of the study performed two 30-minute cycling sessions in a week, no interference with muscle and strength gain was found. 
the frequency of the cardio was too low to harm strength training. So if you plan to combine cardio and strength training into one workout week, I'd say that the good rule of thumb is to have max 3 cardio sessions. This prevents the cardio you do from making you feel overly fatigued. An important side note is that this can differ per person. A trained endurance athlete may be able to do 4 or 5 cardio sessions per week without feeling overly fatigued, but I'd say this is more the exception than the rule. The last variable we should consider is when you time your cardio. Should you do cardio before or after strength training? And the thing is that both options have their drawbacks. When you do cardio before strength training, you can't perform as well in your exercises because the cardio makes you feel fatigued. But doing cardio after strength may reduce the post-workout muscle protein synthesis response. So if your schedule allows for it, it is actually beneficial to completely separate your cardio and strength training sessions. A recent experimental study supports this by showing that muscle growth increases if cardio and strength training are performed on separate days. Having at least 6 hours of rest between your cardio and strength training session is a good rule of thumb. Now, if doing cardio on a separate occasion is too much of a hassle for you, there is another solution. There is good evidence showing that cardio interferes with muscle growth in a local way, so doing a lower body dominant form of cardio like running would only interfere with lower body development. Therefore, one way we can combine cardio and strength training into one session is by doing upper body training first and then something like a lower body dominant cardio session later on. A good example of this is doing a cycling cardio session right after an upper body day. This way you can combine cardio and strength in the same session without harming your gains. So if we take all tips discussed in this video, we reach a simple conclusion on how you can use cardio to burn more fat while maintaining muscle. First of all, it is critical you combine cardio with a diet that puts you in a calorie deficit. We realistically can't out cardio a high calorie diet. Now, if you are in a calorie deficit and want to boost fat loss via cardio without harming muscle growth, first opt for a low impact form of cardio like cycling or the elliptical. Then, have a max of 3 cardio sessions in a week that do not exceed 30 minutes, unless they're walks. And lastly, separate your cardio from your strength training sessions or do lower body cardio after upper body training. And that's all for today's video. I hope this video makes it clear on how you can use cardio to lose fat more effectively. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Also, leave me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, because the more support I get, the more quality content I can push out. And I hope to see you in the next video.